Hi guys. Hope y'all are doing good. Come outside to enjoy some cold weather. <laughs> I think it, I think it's upwards of 95 here. Uh, it's not too bad. The wind's not blowing. There's a little breeze, but it's not windy, and uh, the bugs are out. Not too bad outside, especially here in the garden. It's uh, it's pretty nice out here, but it's been a beautiful day. Today's Monday, August the 5th, 2015. Went out and seen mom yesterday and done a video out there. Uh, those of you that heard mom or heard the video, listen, mom was on it, and so you heard her talking in the background. Uh, that wasn't Marcia. Marcia's, she stayed home. She wasn't able to travel yesterday. And I asked her if she wanted to come out today. She can't get out. She's having a rough time in there. But you know what? She's in a good mood. I've seen something right here. I think I need to take something with me today while I'm out here. I'll do that. I'll take these back. <laughs> I'll show you. Got some of these little tomatoes. I'm... Yep, those got to go in the house. Marsha loves fresh tomatoes, and I'll take her some of those. Tomorrow is her birthday. August the 6th is her birthday. Anyway, oh, right here are the bushes. I'll take her some of these, too. I got some of, got some of these things out here. I, I got a lot of these here to pick. I need to come back out, do some tending to the garden tonight when it cools off. It seems not bad is when you're sitting here, when you get busy. Uh, <laughs> things tend to get a little better in the heat. Let's see what we got today for 2 Timothy 1, verse 3 and 4. And it looks like there are several references to this. Uh, remember, we get the references only out of Paul's letters uh, for a reason. that Because Paul is our epistle for today. He's our apostle for today. And the letters that was get the... The letters that Paul wrote was for the body of Christ. Uh, our realm is is inherited in the heavens. Israel uh, are for the earthly realm. They have a, a terrestrial calling. We have a celestial. So there's two different gospels, two different evangels in the scriptures. So let's see what we got here. An unsearchable riches. Tony Nungesser share something that we picked up. Judy, I think, picked up on this. I'm not sure. I think so. The conscience is a strong ally of faith. Faith in the evangel and a good conscience were of utmost importance to the Apostle Paul. He often gave emphasis to his conscience and that of the others in relation to service. As we see in 2 Timothy 1.3 which says, Grateful am I to God, to whom I am offering divine service for my ancestors with a clear conscience. Now, James Coram also shares in Unsearchable Riches, uh, volume 74, saying, The divine service of Paul's ancestors were principally the service and worship of the tabernacle and later the temple, especially the priestly work of offering the countless approach presents and animal sacrifices. As recorded in Hebrews 9 verse 6 saying now these having been constructed thus the priests indeed are passing continually in front into the front tabernacle performing the divine service. All of the rituals of the law were by types of shadows of the work of Christ for in him Law for righteousness finds its consummation, Romans 10, verse 4. When Christ, the great sin offering, died, he died to sin for once for all time, Romans 6, 10. Paul's entire ministry is centered on the significance of Christ's sacrificial death. Paul's offering of divine service to God was in his spirit the imperceptible power operated by God which produced his renewed mind 
and transformed walk. It was not in fleshly rituals. It was a divine service in the evangel of his son. As we see, it kicks off in Romans 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 9. Thus, Paul's divine service may be said to find its origins or come from his ancestors, despite all the differences between the two. Since Paul understood the various graces and administrators, administrators of God, and especially the place and purpose of the law, he could, with a clear conscience, offer a renew, offer a new and mature divine service in which he induced men to revere God, aside from the law, Acts 18, verse 13, and to proclaim justification apart from law of any kind, we see in Romans 3. He deemed the righteousness which is in, his, which is in law with all its doings as mere refuge. He gladly forfeited all the law's advantages which when compared to the great value inherent in being a member of Christ's body, complete in him are quite limited indeed. As we see in Philippians 3, 4 through 9. At the time Paul wrote 2 Timothy, he was longing to see his dear friend, that I may be filled full of joy, as he said, yet a reminder of the unfeigned faith which is in you. <laughs> 2 Timothy 1, 4 and 5. Timothy's faith was not a simulated or pretend thing. It was that of a genuine child of faith. So we got our verses today, and the uh, the bar translation has this for our verse. It says, I have grace in God, whom I worship from the progenitors in a clean conscience, as I have a throughout non-deficient remembrance concerning you in my entreaties night and day, longing to perceive you as one having been reminded of your tears so that I may be completed with joy. <laughs> but we use a concordant letter for these studies and uh, references. And I'll leave these down under the video if you so desire to go see them in the order that I read them. Here's how the, debar or the uh, concordant translation, translation reads. Gratefully am I to God, to whom I am offering divine service from my ancestors with a clear conscience, as I have an unintermediate remembrance concerning you in my petitions night and day, longing to see you, turn that thing off, longing to see you, remembering your tears, that I may be filled with joy. Yet a reminder of the unfeigned faith which is in you, which first makes its home in your mother, your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice. Now, I am persuaded that is it is in you also, for which cause I am reminding you to be rekindling the gracious gift of God which is in you, through the imposition of my hands. For God gives us not a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and of sanity. First, indeed, I am thanking my God through Jesus Christ concerning all of you. Yeah, all of you. That your faith is being announced in the whole world. For God is my witness, to whom I am offering divine service in my spirit, in the evangel of his Son. How unintermittently I am making mention of you always in my prayers, beseeching that somehow, sometime, at length, I shall be prospered. In the will of God to come to you for I am longing to see you that I may be sharing some spiritual grace with you for you to be established yet this is to be consoled together among you through one another's faith both yours and mine therefore I also on hearing of this faith of yours in the Lord Jesus and that for all the Saints do not cease giving thanks for you making mention in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may be giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the realization of Him. The eyes of your heart having been enlightened for you to perceive what is the expectation of His calling and what the riches of the glory of the enjoyment of His allotment among the saints 
and what the transcendent greatness of his power for us who are believing in accord with the operation of the might of his strength. This reminds me so much of, of us, you know, the body of Christ today, and those that I know that we associate with. It's, wow. Now, you be remaining in what you learned and verified, being aware from whom you learned it, and that from a babe you are acquainted with the sacred scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. For our boasting is this, the testimony of, <laughs> of our conscience, that in holiness and sincerity of God, not flesh and wisdom, but in the grace of God, we behaved ourselves in the world, yet more superabundantly toward you. The truth of my telling in Christ, I am not lying, my conscience testifying together with me in Holy Spirit. The consummation of the charge is love out of a clean heart and a good conscience and unfeigned faith from which some swerving were turned aside into vain pratting, from which some swerving were turned aside into pratting, wanting to be teachers of the law, not apprehending either what they are saying or that concerning which they are insisting. This charge I'm committing to you, child Timothy, according to the preceding prophecies over you, that in them you may be warring the ideal warfare, as we also, you know, all of us in the body having good faith and a good conscience, which some, thrusting away, have made shipwreck as to the faith. Yet at present, because of Timothy's coming to us from you and bringing us the evangel of your faith and your love, and that which you have a good remembrance of us always, longing to see us, even as we also you. Therefore we were consoled, brethren, over you in all our necessity, and affliction through faith for now we are living if ever you are standing firm in the Lord for what thanksgiving are we able to repay to God concerning you for all the joy with which we are rejoicing because of you in front of our God night and day super excessively beseeching to see your faith and to adjust the deficiencies of your faith huh. According as it is just for me to be disposed to you this way over you all because of you having me in heart both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the evangel. You are all for joint participants with me of grace. For God is my witness how I am a longing for all for you all in the compassions of Christ Jesus. Who is our expectation? Who? For who is our expectation, or joy, or wreath, or glory? Or is it not even you in front of our Lord Jesus in his presence? For you are our joy, our glory, and our joy. <laughs> we are thanking God always concerning you, making mention of you in our prayers unintermittently, remembering your work of faith and your toil of love and endurance and expectation of our Lord Jesus Christ in front of our God and Father. I am entreating you then, brethren, by the pities of God, to present your bodies as sacrifice, living, holy, and well-pleasing to God, your logical divine service, and not to be configured to this eon, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, for you to be testing what things, for you to be testing what is the will of God, rather, good and well-pleasing and perfect. Now, may the Lord cause you to increase and superabound in love for one another and for all, even as we also for you, to establish your hearts un unblameable in holiness in front of our God and Father in the presence of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. <laughs> we cannot add to that. We love you all. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Second Timothy 1 verse 3 and 4 and that's a beautiful study <laughs> can't add to that I love you guys I really do appreciate the comments and the emails and I appreciate you and thank you for hanging out with me here
we do we do this out of love for for the body uh, for the upbuilding of it in love and uh, we appreciate it y'all being here anyway time gonna see what God's got for us and I need to get a bucket and come back out here and pick some tomatoes and green beans looks like <laughs> so we'll talk to y'all tomorrow see you then